that we weren't part of it, or where there wasn't our interest, or we were asleep that day. It's, it's a consensus organization, that's a really important part. It's also difficult because when you're talking about 34 different countries, some of them large, some of them where trade is more important, some of them where uh, perhaps protecting their farmers is more important, it's difficult to reach a mutually agreed position, but um, eventually, eventually it happens. In the 21st century, following uh, different areas, shipping, um, like I said, green growth, innovation, innovation. Um, also another area that they not doing a lot about, but is uh, what they call food security, prices of food. Food has gone up over the last year by 30%. For you know the billion or so people who have enough money to absorb that, that's not a problem. But if you're say the 700 million people who live in India and don't make very much money, a 30% rise in food is a very, very, very serious issue. So um, the OECD is also, it's not, a, it's not a fireman. It's not there to respond to an emergency. It's a very slow burn kind of organization. So we spend lots and lots of years to come up with these recommendations. So we don't, we don't we're not here to respond to the emergency of, of the day, although when things like the financial crisis happen or there's unemployment issues, we certainly take these things on board, but we, we're, it's not a fast animal. The OECD is very, very slow, very, del very um, deliberate. Uh, founding members, North America, Europe, uh, Turkey, expanded to members uh, to 2009, Mexico, um, Finland, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea. Uh, proportion of the world economy. This is where uh, we feel it's important to reach out to developing economies because it, in, the, in the good old days, they like to say, we were a large part of the world economy. Uh, mostly, if we agreed amongst ourselves, it, like, it was good for everyone else because we were such a big driver for the train. Um, our portion of the, you know, we're becoming a smaller and smaller locomotive. Um, so, I'm sorry. Um, uh, this is a portion of the world economy. Uh, official development assistance, we provide most of it. World GNP, but this number is kind of going down. World trade, this number is also going down. Energy consumption, hopefully, this will remain the same, if not go down a little bit. And population. As you can see, the original founding members were a very small portion of the population, but a very, had a very big economic impact on the rest of the world. Set to decline, so it's important to reach out to India and China, Indonesia, Brazil, other countries, Colombia, um, South Africa. Uh, but uh, as you can say, we become as we become a smaller and smaller portion. What we do amongst ourselves is, is maybe good for half the economy, but what about the other half? New members since, since 2010, Slovenia, Chile, Israel, Estonia. And it's engagement, Russia. Russia is slated to uh, join. Uh, Russia is, is a particular issue. It's a, it's a large country, very rich uh, in, in minerals, and, and uh, but you know, it has a, I would say, charitably, a checkered past with, with, in certain areas, such as anti-corruption. Um, Russia likes to, they really don't like to, they like to negotiate everything, so everything's a deal with them, so it's a little difficult because in, because joining the OECD, there's a set of standards that you must meet. We're not negotiating the standards. Maybe it can take some time, but the standards are at a pretty high level, so um, they will take some work. And you know, I'm optimistic that Russia will join, but it may take longer than people think. Partner countries. Most of the rest of the world, we try to reach out, do a lot of work in South America, a lot of work in Africa, um, working um, down in, like I say, India and China, but also the other parts of the uh, Middle East. We do a program called the uh, Middle East and North Africa program, where they talk about uh, economic development with the countries in North Africa, especially important now with the Arab Spring, as these countries move from autocratic regimes to more, let's say, uh, Freer, freer conditions that uh, economic development will be important. The U.S. mission, headed by Ambassador Cornblue, uh, she's a, my boss, uh, former uh, policy advisor to President Obama. She's 
very energetic, very intelligent woman, really hardworking. Um, we have a lot of ideas, a lot of things we want to do with the OECD, and so we, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's good to have uh, an energetic person at the head of your organization because it makes everyone else sort of work that much harder. We support, we provide support to U.S. delegations. We have a lot of delegations coming through. Thousands and thousands of people come to different meetings because in the U.S. government, uh, different agencies are responsible for different areas. For example, the Department of Education comes to the education meetings. The Department of the USTR, they come to the trade meetings. The Department of Agriculture does some work with the Agriculture Directorate, um, but also Treasury. Uh, Department of Justice works on um, anti-bribery. So we have lots and lots of different members of the, of the uh, U.S. government. Um, like I said earlier, anti-bribery was very important. Export credit arrangements also very important. We have a new, what they call a, a, a new global form of track and tax transparency. And this is a group where if you agree to join, you agree to provide tax information for, for two other countries. So you can only be a member if you agree to do this. And uh, we've got something like 90 members, 90, which is a lot more than the member of countries, because what it does is it gives an 